Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update by RRG Research. For Monday 26th of June, I'm recording this on Friday the 23rd of June. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London. Before we go into uh, global uh, stock indices and then we're going to go on to finish looking at currencies. So we'll look at the stock markets, uh, particularly the technology stocks, and then we're going to end with uh, some opportunities I think uh, that we see currently in the, in the foreign exchange market. But before we do all that, let's have a look at asset allocation. So are equities a good thing to be in? To do this, I've got a relative rotation graph. I have the MSCI World Index in the center here. So this is versus the World Index. And then I'm using the iShares ETFs as surrogates for the assets. So here we have gold. Gold has moved very rapidly with a long tail from leading into the lagging quadrant. The Europe shares uh, also deteriorating still in the weakening quadrant, but I think uh, we can see where this is heading. All the interest rate uh, related corporate bonds, um, treasuries, um, high, high yielding uh, corporate bonds um, are all pointing southwest and looking poor. Commodities also looking poor as, as well. The uh, emerging markets southwesterly in the week in the lagging quadrant i the small cap coming up a bit nothing too interesting there there's just one thing in the leading quadrant and heading in the northeasterly direction that's us uh, stocks so we're right if you are uh, concentrating on us stocks not much change to report on the uh, major global stock indices versus the versus cash uh, we're looking at cash here so everything on the right of the vertical line is outperforming holding money in cash and anything to the left is underperforming that we've got, still got the out here the furthest uh, to the right is uh, the nasdaq the nikkei also very strong uh, weak uh, currency and strong stock market the s p has uh, improved a lot the the dow has uh, improved a lot jumping from the lagging quadrant in, into the leading quadrant and the Russell 2000 is, is improving but it's still lagging behind. The European indices, the stocks, the DAX, the CAC all bunched up together and very stable here outperforming cash but not as good as the Nasdaq but better than the Dow and the Russell and the FTSE here is still holding like avoiding recession but just about and quite stable short tail here just in the weakening quadrant. The Hang Seng is the weak one here. This is a daily chart of the S&P moving up strongly, higher lows in place, breaking this gap, pulling back, forming support here, breaking this major resistance at 4,300 4, level, which had long-term long resistance, powerful breakout, pullback, drifting sort of pattern, causing the MACD to narrow up a bit, but still be positive, and the RSI to come down through 65 from, from above. Zooming out a bit to the weekly chart, we see that the MACD here gap is widening. We just had this rather small pullback candle, got a lot of power in here. We've broken through that 4,300 level and we see the next level is the 4,600 level before the high up at 4,800. So 4,400 to 4,600. 600 is does look as though there's little friction there we've got a little bit, bit of pullback this may be a good setup return to the uptrend look for signs of strength don't buy into weakness and but we would expect if all is go, is going according to plan and that this the buying should reassert itself before we get to the 4300 so this could be something for next week is to watch for this drifting to lose uh, momentum and for a return to the, the bull market jump in possibly quite quickly in that but it, uh, to get back in again or to add if you got a position already happily and the confirmation of course is going through 4500 that the uptrend is firmly underway and that the 4600 is in our sights index that we saw is furthest to the right on the RRG chart it's really driven by a small relatively small uh, group of stocks of about 10 stocks uh, sometimes called the uh, uh, FANG plus uh, stocks the one uh, further to the right here is NVIDIA making new highs powering ahead weakening quite a bit meta 
AMD quite stable here in a good position and then all of them looking pretty good but what ones are looking are rising in the northeasterly de direction we've got Tesla we've got Snowflake going easterly got Netflix going northeasterly Apple heading southerly Google southerly and Twitter suddenly southerly Snowflake Tesla Netflix are good and of course Nvidia is extremely good here is NVIDIA weekly chart uh, soaring into the deep blue sky there. The, once we broke the 350 level, released a lot of energy as we go, broke the new, into new highs. You see the MACD there uh, moving up very powerfully indeed. Uh, the RSI still making new highs. There's high momentum on that. There's no bearish divergence yet. Of course, anything like this can implode in a second. Any expectations are so high, any slight disappointment in the news can uh, uh, make this market recoil. But it's got undeniably heavy, uh, a, a strong upside momentum at the moment. Uh, we picked on uh, earlier Amazon as one of the leaders and it's heading in a northeasterly direction on the RRG chart. It's broken through this important 115 level. It's a uh, bursting forward from this from this ascending triangle there's a tiny bit of resistance at 136 but really the big resistance doesn't come in until 145 it looks clear for a shot at that the MACD very positive very high momentum on that RSI making new highs this is a very strong market with resistance still quite far above it in the group is also snowflake and snowflake is at a resistance point which it looks like it's going to break so this one could be starting its move up and could catch up relatively quickly We've got higher lows in place um, here in the longer term pattern since for the last 12 months, then steepening lately. We broke the downtrend line here, retested it, and now we've, we've got a consolidation at now. It's very important to get to detail on this. So 185, but there's a little spike high here at 194, and then we've got the high up here at 205. So these three levels here, one after the other, obviously, if we do break up, will indicate that we're well on our way towards resistance, per first resistance at 244, but I don't think that's too strong. Uh, probably nearer 300 would be the next uh, serious resistance level. So let uh, just draw it to your attention slow fake it may not be one that you're so familiar with but this one looks as though it's on the verge of following and it's got a lot of potential on the upside and now we move to the foreign exchange market starting with a weekly relative rotation graph with of course the dollar right here in the middle anything to the right of that vertical 100% level is in a relative uptrend versus the dollar and anything to the left is in a relative downtrend. And here we have most notably heading southwesterly, that is weakening with also with low momentum continues to be the Japanese yen and the Japanese yen would be your choice, I would say, for any uh, short side against perhaps another pair. I've been favoring, we've been favoring the uh, Canadian dollar. Surprisingly, pound flipping around here, strengthening, holding euro, weakening very slightly. Flicking now to the daily version, we see that practically everything is on the right hand side versus the dollar except for the yen. So in the shorter uh, time frame, we've got a little bit of turning down going on here, even in the Canadian dollar and Australian dollar. But the euro still pretty good angle, but just a very slight blunting in it. This is sterling cable on a weekly chart and see we've been in a strong uptrend really since um, uh, September, October last year, uh, breaking through this uh, support level, uh, rising little pause um, at the beginning of the year and then uh, breaking through and then retesting, moving ahead now. Then yesterday, big day, of course, interest rate uh, height high, at the high end of expectations. The next resistance is this formidable level at 130 and then up at 134. But we've still got upside momentum here. The weekly MACD looked as though it was going to cross but didn't and it's moved up and showing increasing momentum. We've got higher lows in the RSI but we have got a bearish divergence. High, higher, high, lower high in the weekly chart. MACD 
is positive, just hooking back very slightly on this easiness here. That's this blunting that we saw in the RRG chart. And then here we've got a very high reading and pulling down and correcting. So what's the overall situation here for sterling? I think that it's, it's still in an uptrend. It's, it's moved down a bit, but it's coming back to support, which I'll put in here at this high, which is a likely place for it to stop, which is close to right where we are now. Do it carefully. I conceivably see that if we're going to continue this pattern, you see we broke the high, then we retest it, break the high, and then retest it and and then move on up towards that 130 level. So this looks good to continue despite the current easiness which you might see as an opportunity. Now to the weekly euro. The euro is really consolidating. It's consolidating with a rising pattern. So we've got higher lows in place in here and higher highs in place here. It's taking place around 50% of the fall of last year. So it's churning around there. It's being supported to by this April 2020 low here and it's suffering from resistance um, at around 111 uh, from this low here from uh, January of this year. Um, the uh, the MACD, let's start with that, is, um, is uh, below its signal line, uh, but it's moving back towards it. Uh, the RSI is steady, so just above 60%, so not particularly strong. So the, the longer term pattern here is that it's a, a little bit hesitant, but it is generally in a steady, a gentle, steady pattern. Some, something that we saw in the relative rotation graph, so it's steady but a little bit hesitant. Steady, but a little bit hesitant tone in the daily chart too. So here we have the higher lows pattern, we've got higher highs also. We've got resistance at 111, just a little bit of hesitancy uh, right now. A big support also uh, that we saw in the previous graph around 106.51, 107. The MACD is positive here. Um, the RSI has just come is this is the hesitant bit, but it's uh, generally very strong. So it is hesitant at this formidable resistance, which extends all the way up uh, to 111. Once we get through 111, then we're clear and away. But it does look as though it's hesitant and going to continue to be hesitant around this overall 50% uh, recovery uh, level. I think this one is probably like to, likely to continue to stall for a little bit, but eventually resolve itself to the upside. But our favourite remains the uh, Canadian dollar. Um, we picked this up on the RRG chart when it was in the uh, improving quadrant and now it's crossed into the leading quadrant and it's uh, with the best trage trajectory of a northeasterly direction. And um, here it is having broken this series of uh, lower highs in here. This is on the weekly chart when it broke through 175 and now 176 and I think I see the resistance not coming in and a bit of a clear run up to 77 cents. The MACD here, the gap is widening so the um, the uh, momentum is increasing for it at this point. The RSI is pointing up and um, head, heading uh, yeah, in an upward direction. The, the momentum is very powerful here too. And I would repeat what I uh, said uh, a few weeks ago, which uh, started when we saw this, this uh, strength in the Canadian dollar and that one swinging around, long tails, looking good and uh, looking like there was opportunity for our performance through that currency. And then the very noticeable weakness in the Japanese yen. Something to look at is, is holding, and if you haven't got it already, but looking still with room to go against the dollar up, up to 77 cents, where the resistance is quite tough, starts to get quite tough. And best of all uh, is to do a pairing against the Japanese yen, which uh, continues to look bad and is still pointing southwest in the relative rotation graph and so can go much further. So. I'll leave it there for this week. Thank you very much indeed for watching. We, are, we will be back with you next week at the same time. It will be, I think, myself, but either myself or Julius de Campanar, the, the directors of RRG Research. Thanks very much for listening. I hope it helps you and may the trend be with you.